Okay. Well, good morning. Welcome to the April uh, Tier 3 Principal and Coach Meeting. I understand there's a lot of competing events today at this time, so I do appreciate you guys coming to this meeting. Um, and then it is being recorded, so this will be posted on the uh, the Grants for Me website. It's actually going to be a YouTube, and then I post it. I provide the posting link to um, on the uh, Grants for Me notification system. Um, and usually the turnaround is about two to three days. So hopefully it'll be sometime um, early next week. So my name is Monique Sullivan and I am the Continuous School Improvement Co Coordinator. And although I'm listed under the ESCA team, I work with the assessment team under Maine's model of school supports, uh, which falls under several sections of the ESSA statute but specifically Title um, One, Section 111 and Section 1003. I also have listed here all of our um, all of our coaches who hopefully you'll be able to um, meet with um, during our collaborative time today. And then also you should see your coach here as well. And again, we have been asked to review the mission. I'm not going to go through this. This is the same mission and vision that and, and strategic priorities that all of us at the Department of Education use. And it's the driving force behind all of the work that we do at the MDOE and all the work that we do with schools and what we call the field. So today's objectives are one, to stay informed about the latest grant requirements and updates, um, to continue looking at the use at, a, to continue looking at use, using the year at a glance uh, to plan LT or leadership team meetings. Monitor continuous school improvement plan, um, viewing, but specifically what we're gonna look at a little bit later today, and that is viewing reimbursements and grants for me invoicing platform. And this is to going to be to help plan for the end of funding for FY23 funds and also um, looking at summer professional learning activities for you to figure out how much money you actually have. Um, and then we have some collaborative time with school principals and leadership coaches to assess the effectiveness of the leadership team meetings. Um, we are at the end of April and hopefully it's, this is a great time to see how effective your, uh, your leadership team has been for professional learning, hoping that you'll be able to now be able to go in and view reimbursements and grants for me and the assess the effectiveness of the leadership team meetings. Uh, learning outcomes, making connections and determining next steps for your SIG programming. And then takeaways, learning how LT meetings are operating and functioning in other schools identified for tier three CSI supports. And I just want to say, I know I've said this before, but I oftentimes will put the, the tier we use in Maine and then also what is used at the federal and the statute. The statute actually has the uh, ATSI, TSI, and a, uh, CSI. And in Maine, we use tier one, tier two, tier three. So I just kind of interchange them uh, so that people are aware of that. The next is updates, just some information and some grant requirements. And I do want to mention that the Maine's model of school, the Maine's model school support survey that was 2024, that um, was for our schools for identified for tier three supports. This was mentioned at the last meeting in uh, March. Um, this form is for principals to complete and the responses are going to be used to not only make, um, you know, try to figure out what supports are needed for next year, continuing on with this year, and then also give us a little bit of guidance of where funding is being spent by our schools. Now, uh, I think those of you who have already completed it, very thankful for that. I know last week was um, April break, and I'm hoping that most of you were able to take that time off and get some rest, relax, rejuvenate, uh, but we still need several schools to complete it. When the last time I checked, which was yesterday, uh, only 36 out of 70 schools had completed the survey. So um, we, you know, I know there were some parts in there like doing some budget pieces, but hopefully um, after today, when you can go in, learn how to go in and look at, see your reimbursements, 
you'll get a better idea of how much money has actually been spent or not spent, but actually been drawn down on these funds. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that link into the chat so that if you, uh, if you wanna go and do it, not right now, but just so that you have it, I will also, it'll also be in the notes as well. Not the notes, but in the uh, PowerPoint when it gets sent to you. Next is uh, Maine's model of school support for FY23-24 identifications. I know I sound like a broken record and we've been saying since September that these are gonna be coming out. And I just wanna preface that with one little thing and that is um, if you look at other uh, state departments around the country, there's more than one person that does this work. It's a team of people, um, anywhere between five, 10, 15, 20 people, even more than that. Um, and so right now it's me doing identifications, working with some somebody from the data team. Um, and so it is taking a little longer. Uh, we were hoping to have them out by this time, obviously. Uh, we, we are making identifications. We are aware of which schools and what their identifications are, but we're still finalizing. One of the things we're finalizing is the letters that are gonna go out to people or go out to schools. The, um, the identification cycles, we wanna make sure that everyone, when they get notified, they know how long they're gonna be in that status and when they have the ability to exit that status. Uh, what's moving, what next steps are for those schools that are going to be exiting, what's their next step. So we're working all of that out right now. And we're also trying to make sure that when you get notified that you're going to be able to access your school profile for this year. Um, we're not going to be, we're trying to cut down on a lot of the time as well. And we're just going to give you access to that school profile. All that being said, we're also going to be hosting uh, Zoom webinars for the different tiers. So schools will be able to figure out what their next steps are. We understand there is a sense of urgency. We don't have that much time left of school. Um, so we do thank you for your patience. Um, and we know, I know that most of you understand that with most schools operating with very limited staffing as well. So our goal is, is every day it's to be the next day, but we keep, like we just met yesterday and we found some, we had to move some, we had to move some things around again. We just want to try to be as clear as possible. Um, and so that, the notifications are helpful and not just so full of nuances that you can't figure out where to go. So again, hope it'll be soon. I just, I don't want to give it an ETA at this point, but we're trying to narrow it down very quickly. And the last thing um, on the updates is the, um, I think I mentioned this at the March meeting, the FY23 SIG funds are expiring on 9-30-2024 for everyone. So uh, we've already received a tidings waiver, which is a one-year uh, extension on that. That was already received last year, and that expires on 9:30. So um, hopefully, with look, be able to look at your reimbursement system, you'll be able to see that as well. Um, it, you know, I know some schools don't want to return funds, you know, but nobody likes doing that. But also, uh, if you haven't mapped out that that funding as well, so hopefully after today, you'll be able to think about what you have available for summer. And then you'll be more aware of when the, uh, how much you have at, as we're getting close to the closeout for FY23. FY24 technically is going to run out on 930, 2024 as well, but we have requested a tidings waiver amendment. So hopefully that we'll get an extra year to spend um, to spend those funds. Uh, and if you are a school that's able to exit, which hopefully you'll be notified soon. Um, your your time frame might will be a little bit different for FY24, um, especially if we get a tidings waiver. And that will be part of the Zoom meetings and part of the identification letters that we're sending out is to give people the next steps, um, depending on what tier that they are going to be in. Okay, and year at a glance, we have been looking at this each of our meetings starting in August and moving all the way into April. Uh, we are at the end of April and today's focus or on the year at a glance is to analyze progress toward goals. And just kind of looking at this as like a three-way street, um, you have your SIG application or your strategic plan, which includes your SMART goals, 
your strategies and activities and your action steps. Your sh- I, already, I pulled out the short term short term outcomes because this is just one year. There, there are long term, which is more of a three years, and then the outputs and the impact. I just put a little quick screenshot of the CNA um, and then uh, a screenshot of the template that we gave back in December for how to set up your agendas or run your leadership team meetings um, twice a month. And as you can see, there should be, uh, it's just, it's continuous back and forth. So your um, your CNA should drive should drive your, your school improvement plan. And then you're monitoring that school improvement plan at every leadership team meeting by asking like, where are we in this? Have we met our our SMART goals? Where are we in the SMART goal process? Have we implemented the action steps that we said we were going to implement? Have they had the impact that we thought they were going to have? Do we have the data to show that? So this is why that arrow is kind of three pronged because you're constantly looking back and forth to see that. And hopefully I know there's anywhere between six to eight weeks left of school, depending on when your school is getting out. Um, So really looking at your outputs and your impact at this point, uh, because you're going to start thinking about what you want to do over the summer. You're going to think about what you want to do starting next year. um, And, you know, this should drive that. Okay. So the next piece um, is sharing the leadership operations or leadership team evaluation. So when I got ready to uh, put this uh, slide deck together, the presentation together, I realized that a lot of principals are coming in a little bit because they've got a lot of things that are coming in a little tardy. And a lot of times principals have to leave the meeting early. So I decided to put the collaborative time in the middle of the meeting ver- or middle of this presentation versus on either end. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to have, I'm going to break you up into uh, breakout groups and you're going to share um, how your leadership team is functioning at this point. Um, our school leadership coaches are going to facilitate the discussion and take notes, which we're going to use to help guide our support that we're going to use with, uh, with our schools in the future. I'm estimating about 20 minutes. Um, and then I also threw the using the wise ways indicator ID 8 as a guide. This was provided to schools also back in December, but I decided to throw it back up there. And then the two questions that we're going to have you guys um, discuss is what is your LT doing that is effective and thinking about the wise ways indicator and then ID 8 And then where does your leadership team need support um, using uh, this wise ways effective practice as a guide. So I'm going to stop the pot. I'm going to stop the recording right now. Um, I hope you had some time to share out what is working well for your leadership team and what you need support with and that our coaches were able to help facilitate that conversation that we're going to take that information back to try to help um, support what you need help with and then maybe borrow you and do what you guys are doing that is and disseminate that to add to other um, schools uh, to help with their leadership teams. So we're going to switch gears a little bit um, and we're going to talk about monitoring reimbursements, looking at viewing reimbursements for in grants for me and then uh, thinking about your planning for summer professional learning and end of funding availability. I just want to stress, well, let me go back a second. Um, I just want to stress that the next the next few slides are to assist with the planning of professional learning opportunities and expending funds before the period of allowability ends as for FY23 and potentially for FY24 for those of you who are going to exit tier three status. Um, this is also going to help with any kind of performance reports or monitoring um, that will be occurring in the fall. Um, and we move to the next slide. Um, this is going to be a very quick overview, um, and there is no, 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 no expectations that principals start um, invoicing for funds. It's just to give principals a place to check when they're trying to determine how much funding they have re- gotten reimbursed for, or their, their district has, and then um, and then just let them know how much money they have remaining. Before I get started, I just want to say there 
A lot of times we talk about obligation, we talk about expenditures, and we talk about reimbursement for invoices. Obligations are when you actually have like, you actually have to pay that bill. I always think of like a credit card, right? Like you go and you buy something in July, you put it on your credit card, but then you don't get the bill until um, August. That's an obligation. Um, you didn't meet, you haven't really um, paid out the cost yet because you're still waiting to get the credit card. So that's an obligation. The expenditure is actually when it gets, uh, your district actually pays it. And then reimbursement or invoices is when your district uh, seeks reimbursement. Federal funds work on a reimbursement system uh, for the state of Maine so that the district itself or the SAU has to incur the cost first, then they seek reimbursement for that. And that's what we're going to look at right now is just so that as a principal, you can go in and you can see um, how much money do I actually have. And especially um, over the last couple of months, I've seen a lot of updates and changes to the FY23 SIG applications, which is completely okay. We want that. But I'm also want to make sure that principals are not getting, they're not making changes. And then or our leadership teams are not making changes and don't realize that there's obligations sitting there or that this, maybe that what you thought you deleted actually got paid out. So um, hopefully this is just to clear that up. So real quickly, this one, and again, the next two slides may be the only two that you actually look at, um, just to give you an idea. So um, this one actually tells you how to get there. So you would log into your school um, improvement under grants for me. Uh, this is actually, we have a test site. So I logged in as an actual school. You'd come over here to the left side where it says invoices. You click on that and then I start apologize, this is so blurry, but then you would click on the first thing that says invoices. You're not really gonna search for invoices unless you want to, but that'll like, you can actually put in an invoice that you wanna look for, but you're, you don't need to get to that level of detail. You just wanna be able to see that. So then, um, and, again, and then the next slide is, there are a lot of annotations to this slide, but I just wanted, to show you that when you click on that invoices, this is what's going to come up. Um, and it's going to say, you know, make sure you're in FY24. You can do this for FY23 as well. So over here, you can click here and I'll tell you, I don't, I think you can go all the way back to FY22. Um, and there's a lot on this page. I'm gonna try to go through it um, fairly quickly, but enough succinctly so you can use it. So the big thing here is available budget. This tells you how much your award was. Um, and I'm not going to worry about the total available but uh, amount right now. Um, received amount. This means this is how much the um, SAU has been re has received in reimbursement uh, for under these funds. And I say received because just because you have a bill sitting on a desk doesn't mean that that's been invoiced. So this is as of right now, this school as of April 18th, this school has not, uh, or this SAU has not sought reimbursement for any of their FY24 SIG funds. The next one is net available budget. This is what you get when you subtract all the money that's already been received by the SAU. And I say SAU because even though the money is awarded to the school, the SAU is the fiscal agent. So the SAU is the one that actually gets the money, actually you know receives reimbursement um, and is supposed to be used for the school. And then the pending request amount, this means that um, an invoice was submitted, but there was something, it hasn't been processed yet, but it is sitting there um, and it won't get subtracted from the total amount until it gets processed. Um, so again, what you wanna do is you just wanna look at your um, net available amount, see if there's any pending request amount, and then that should tell you how much money you have um, left in your in that account to help with balance uh, or uh, determine what you want to use for your summer professional learning and any amount that needs to be expended before the period of availability ends. We can talk about liquidation later. All that means is that you have a few months to get all of your reimbursements in. Now again, like I said, this may be where you end. You may be like, I don't I like this all I need. I just need to, I need to know a bottom uh, uh, you know an ending amount. Um, but if you're like me, some of you might want to go a little bit deeper and find out what's that pending request. So if that's, if you're a little bit like me, then you're going to, uh, you're going to click on this here where it says a grant tier three strategic, a school strategic plan. And if you click on that, that'll take you to this page. And this is kind of like a little, a little um, GAN. It gives you some information, some, uh, some grant award information. 
This gives you all the invoices that have been submitted for this in this grant. Right now, this, um, this uh, SAU has only submitted one invoice for FY24 SIG funds. Here's the amount. Um, here's the period where that where those um, expenses were incurred. The status is that when it was view, reviewed by our um, business manager or uh, sorry, um, a management business a management analyst, it was kicked back for whatever reason. It was there was the last time it was viewed on March 27th, and then the voucher the voucher number. This is actually the check number. So when that um, invoice gets processed, it will actually get a number. And if your SAU, um, some SAUs uh, don't wanna do it electronically, they actually get a check sent to them in the mail. That'll be the check number. Um, others SAUs actually have this done electronically. So it'll just be done electronically. Um, again, this could be, you may not wanna go this far, but if you wanna know a little bit more information, you can click on the service period and this'll tell you a little bit more detail. You can go to the history log It'll tell you the comments. It'll provide in there why it was sent back. Um, and then any related documents, um, like if you are right, if you're we're seeking reimbursement for salaries, you're going to need your time and effort. You might need receipts for travel. And then you're also going to need your trial balance. Again, some of this may be way more than any of you want to know, but I think sometimes if you have access to it and you can look at it, um, it's not like this mysterious, where is all the money? What's been invoiced? What's not? What's been received? what has not. Um, I also stress that keep in mind that especially when we start doing performance reports or monitoring that expenditures are may not necessarily be the same as invoices. So you could have your business manager could have a stack of uh, bills that need to be um, invoiced for. So you may think you spent all this money and you may have, but you just haven't sought reimbursement for it. So this is also a good way to, to get that um, um, kind of aligned and calibrated. And so just to kind of end with that, the summer professional learning and the end of available avail end of funding availability. So step one, you want to look at and analyze your progress toward goals. And we're at the end of April. Think about how has have you met your goals? Have you implemented your action steps? Have they had the impact that you want? Do you want to continue with them? Do you want to do something different? Do you want an extension of them? Um, and then step two, you know, if you're not really from, if you don't know how much money you have or how much has already been spent, um, go in there and look at your SIG reimbursements. Um, we really, really stress that you go and talk with your business manager, whoever does invoices for your, um, for your school district. Make sure you don't have any obligated expenses that just not have this, that have not uh, been invoiced for yet. Um, keep all that um, situated. The next step is, you know, Finish up your 23, 24 school year. Um, this can include your 23 SIG funds and your 24, they're, they're, they're coming together simultaneously. And then the next step would think about what you wanna do for your pl planning for your summer professional learning um, and what are you gonna do at the end of, you know, before the end of availability, the funding availability before the end of the school year. We stress, 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 don't wait until September 29th to try to spend all your money by September 30th. Start planning that now or having a plan for that. Maybe we won't be spending it to at least have a plan now because FY23 funds are ending for everyone on 9-30-2024. Um, FY24 um, SIG funds will end um, for will end on 9-30-2024 for tier three schools exiting tier three status. Um, and they may end for everyone if we don't get the tidings waiver from the USDOE. Now, typically in the past, they've granted them, but uh, we never know from year to year if they're going to get granted. So um, think about that um, as you're planning that. Notes, invoicing should be done on a continuous basis and then try to get those expenses obligated as soon as possible. So that is pretty much the end of this presentation. Um, here's our contact information. And then uh, the next slide is just how to get a hold or how to, all the communication uh, venues for the uh, Department of Education, and then our resources of how to access different resources and opportunities, and then our professional development calendar uh, at the department. And I am going to